everyone, welcome back to the second week of Columbia Insights Creative Clash. My name is Trinity Brown and I will be your host this afternoon. We've had some amazing talent on the show this past two weeks and in the studio with us today we have another great contestant. Hysterical comedian Julian Axelrod is here with us today. He's going to do a com comedy routine for us that will crack you up. So without further ado, here's the one and only Julian Axelrod. Thank you. Thanks, Trinity. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks for coming out. Uh, I know what you guys are thinking, seeing me up here. You know, finally, a straight white guy doing stand-up. <laughs> You know, there's all these issues today with race and gender and sexuality. Let's hear you get a straight white guy's perspective on things. Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, like, what's the deal with all these opportunities that are available? <laughs> you ever notice how cool the cops are? You know, relatable stuff like that. Uh, I am Jewish. That is kind of my one claim to diversity. Uh, I'm Russian Jewish by heritage. And my dad is Jewish, but my mom is not, which means I get a lot of people questioning my Judaism. And my people, I pretty much just mean non-Jewish white girls. <laughs> like, it's, a, it's never some bearded rabbi being like, you leave this house of worship with your reform Catholic mother. It's always some girl named Kendall being like, um, doesn't your mom have to be Jewish for you to be Jewish? And I'm like, don't you have to be Native American to wear that headband? <laughs> Goes both ways, Kendall. Goes both ways. Uh, I do come from a very diverse family, which I love. Uh, we have all types of people in my family. Everything from, like, white to blindingly white, just every color in the rainbow. It's beautiful. Uh, it's good to be here doing stand-up. Uh, stand-up is weird. It's weird that you can get paid for stand-up. Stand-up isn't really like other jobs you can get paid for. Like, I'll give you an example. A lot of times after a bad set, uh, you'll, a comedian will get off stage and they'll be like, well, I bombed, but I got up there and I had fun, and that's what matters. But like, you'll never hear a judge be like, well, I was pretty biased, I overlooked a lot of important evidence. I think I just let a convicted murderer go free, but I got to bang the gavel and yell order in the court a few times. Someone call this one a win. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get a little political here. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about their Miranda rights lately. You guys know about that. A lot of people talking about their Miranda rights, which is weird to me because last time I checked, Carrie's the one who writes. That's right, a Sex in the City joke from a man. Did I just blow your guys' minds? I hope so. Uh, I d speaking of feminism, I have a lot of feminist friends, and I hear a lot of my friends talk about uh, the male gaze. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically when men stare at women and objectify them, and it's terrible. But for the longest time, I thought my friends were talking about the male gaze, like G-A-Y-S. <laughs> so I never knew what they were talking about. My friends would be like, oh, I'm sick of having to deal with the male gaze all the time. I'm like, look, I know you're feminist, but... That's pretty homophobic, <laughs> and it's like specific homophobia, too. <laughs> I do think men and women are pretty much equal, with one pretty major exception. Women are much better at complimenting each other than men. Men are, <laughs> men are terrible, like, women are so good at compliments. Like, have you ever seen a girl compliment another girl on, like, something she's wearing? She's like, oh, my God, Katie, I love your dress. I am in love with your dress. I would kill to wear that dress. I would murder a man in cold blood to wear your dress for five seconds. Katie, I love your dress. I love you. You're perfect. Never change. <laughs> like, that is beautiful. Meanwhile, I'll go up to my friend. I'll be like, hey, man, I like your pants. He's like, whoa, bro, what are you trying to stare at? What are you staring? What are you trying to see? Like, I'm trying to see your junk, man. That's what's happening. <laughs> Today's internet age, the easiest way to see a guy's junk is through his chinos. <laughs> That's how it goes. I um, feel like there's a double standard in our society where whenever an attractive actor plays, does like a drama and plays an unattractive character, they're praised for like their bravery and their versatility and they get like awards and praise and all this stuff. But unattractive actors don't get the same credit for playing the same roles. Like people are never like, oh, who's P Paul Giamatti playing in this movie? A sweaty, overweight, unattractive guy? What a brave <laughs> choice he's making for the past 20 years. I, um, I do most of, my most of my research for my jokes on a website called Yahoo Answers. <laughs> If you want to know why I'm so informed, uh, most of my <laughs> material comes from Yahoo Answers. Uh, if you don't know what Yahoo Answers is, it's basically a website where the dumbest people can ask the dumbest questions and get the dumbest answers from other dumb people. Like a guy in Montana will be like, is it cool if I eat sunblock? And then a guy in Peru will be like, yeah, man, go for it. And the guy in Montana will be like, awesome, that is literally all the reassurance I needed. <laughs> like. Yahoo Answers is basically the internet equivalent of that one kid in elementary school who would tell everyone what sex was, but like didn't really get it himself. 
He'd be like, sex is when two people rub their butts together. You'd be like, that sounds wrong, but he seems so confident. <laughs> I'm just going to believe him. Thanks, guys. I'm Julian Axelrod. Thanks for coming out. So much, Thanks Julia. So much. You were Appreciate great. Thank you. No problem. Viewers, send in your responses and questions for Julian at Creative Clash. Don't go away. After the break, we'll sit down with Julian and ask him a few questions about him and his comedy. Don't move that mouse. Chip, I'll fly us to the moon. If we we will arrive tomorrow afternoon. We could take our daddy's rubber out under the stars. But get in a crater and pretend the moon is ours. If this feeling never dies, I'll kiss you when you close your eyes. We'll turn our heads up to the skies, watching the earth rise. The days will all turn into months, and I'm in mean, literally. She give us a whole bunch of time to go sightseeing We'll find the glory in the turf and give her a salute Plant a new flag for the earth, it's the least that we could do This is where we're supposed to be, here in one six gravity So let's get moon rocks across the sea of tranquility oh. Now that we've seen some, some of what Julian can do with his stand-up Let's talk to him about him and his comedy so, Julian, what made you interested in even starting this comedy career? Well, I've always loved making people laugh, but I didn't really get into stand-up until I think I was about 11 or 12, and I saw a comedian, Dimitri Martin, on TV, just happened to stumble upon it, and I became obsessed. I just watched as much stand-up as I could. You know, I was consuming as much as I could. And after a while, I started thinking, like, hey, maybe I could do this. And I think I, at the time, I thought it was the kind of thing everyone thought they could do. Like, I thought everyone could just do stand-up. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting at the dinner table with my family. I remember telling my dad and my sister, I was like, you know, I think, I know everyone thinks they can do stand-up, but like, I think I actually want to do it. Right. And they were like, people don't think that. That's not something <laughs> everyone assumes. Right. Uh, but luckily they were really supportive and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm from LA originally, so nice. there were a lot of open mics and shows I could do. And I just started doing it and me meeting people through that and doing shows. And, mm -hmm. you know, here I am seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So who inspires you in this comedy world? Who, you know, um, like drives mm -hmm. your jokes and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. I, one of my, I, for me, uh, I think the funniest you know, comedian alive right now is Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. I think he's so funny and insightful and hilarious while still like making a point about the world. And that's kind of ideally what I'd like to, you know, achieve with my stand up. But I don't, you know, I don't think I'm nearly as good as him. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, sort of don't even want to imitate his style because he's so amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Stylistically, uh, John Mulaney was a big uh, inspiration for me. He was a, um, you know, he's a big comedian right now, and I just saw him, and I was like, oh, this is, this is what I want my comedy to be like. How can I, how much can I imitate him without getting sued for stealing his jokes, right. basically? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how closely can I imitate him? <laughs> um, yeah, he's a huge inspiration. Uh -huh. um, you know, some older comedians, George Carlin, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bill Cosby, um, Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just, there's so many great comics out there. I've tried to, you know, stay, stay on top of as many as I can. Nice. Now, what advice do you give people who also want to pursue comedy? The easiest way to do it is just honestly to just go out and do it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, starting out, you're not going to be good. I definitely wasn't when I started. Uh, but stand up, it's not like, you know, other things you can just write a lot and like practice on your own. You really have to get out there. And I've had jokes that I've loved and then done them in front of people and realized, oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, just so much of, yeah, I think you just grow so much just in going on stage and doing it. Mm -hmm. And a big part of it is just focus on things that are funny to you. Like, you know, if. If you're just trying to talk about what you think people might be interested in, then the audience can usually tell that you're trying to pander to them. Pander to them. But yeah. if you just focus on whatever your weird sense of humor is, then you're going to find people who appreciate that. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> now, where do you plan on going with this comedy career um, after you graduate? Sure, I, um, I want to keep doing it as long as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I want to do it as a career just because it's so hard yeah. to make a living just from stand-up. But it's something I definitely want to continue doing for as long as I can. Um, 
I do, I mean, I'd love to continue writing comedy in the future in whatever uh, capacity, and if I get to keep doing stand-up, that'd be great. But if not, then I know I'll, at least I got to do it in college. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> now, you're in Chicago, which mm -hmm. is a huge city for comedy. Sure. Um, what are some of the things that you're doing outside of Columbia as far as comedy? I'm um, just trying to go to a lot of open mics. Mm -hmm. And I also there's also just so many great comedy shows in Chicago that you, yeah. uh, I think, you know, as, as important as doing stand-up is to any comedian, it's also you want to consume as much comedy as you can, mm -hmm. whether going to Second City or just going to open mics. You know, I'm trying to do open mics when I can. Um, there's a great stand-up show called the Two Hour Comedy Hour uh, that's off the Blue, we Blue Line Western Stop, and that's a really funny show. I think just like if you wanna, if you wanna do comedy, there's a, there are websites that just list all the open mics and you can find one every night of the week if you wanna just go and just pr hone your skills. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, is there anyone that you inspire to be like? Um, God, I would love to be like, you know, I mentioned John Mulaney earlier, right. where he sort of started out as stand-up and then moved into writing for television. I'd love mm -hmm. to do something like that. It's almost like a, um, you know, a Seinfeld would be great. Not that I'd want to start my own show. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to be like a, you know, John Mulaney or a, um, maybe a Pete Holmes or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I really admire comedians who can, um, who really focus on, the, you know, uh, they can do other jobs that they, you know, love stand-up and keep returning back to that and they just follow whatever creative avenues mm -hmm. their inspiration leads them. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They blend a lot of different mediums. I really uh, yeah. aspire to be like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Julian. Great answers, Julian. Now our audience at home have been tweeting throughout the show and our social media producer, Francis, has, some, has been monitoring the questions and the comments for Julian. Francis, what's our first tweet? Hey Trinity, you got tons of tweets today. So Leanne wants to know, how do you calm your nerves before doing stand-up? Ooh, good question. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I've been doing it for years now and I still get nervous right before I yeah. go on. I uh, usually just try and, I pace a lot. I you know look at my set list obsessively just to make sure I know what jokes I'm gonna do. And I'm pretty much nervous until right up, right, right before I go on. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, whenever I get on stage, I just the nerves kind of go away because I know it's, it's. I'm not like looking forward to it anymore. It's happening, and right. my body just kind of goes into fight or flight. Like either you're gonna <laughs> adapt to this and do the jokes, or you're gonna have a panic attack on stage. <laughs> right. What's the next question, Francis? Cindy wants to know: Can we see you perform at any local comedy clubs? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I. Um, I'm not at the level where I'm selling out theaters yet <laughs> or whatever, but uh, I'm trying to do you know shows in Columbia and mm -hmm. open mics whenever I can. I'm gonna try to be doing Little Mouth this uh, oh, nice. coming Sunday. Okay. Uh, I guess if you want to know where to where I'm gonna be performing, follow me at Julian Axrod on Twitter. Nice. That's a great. That's the best way anyway, I can describe. Okay. It, yeah. <laughs> What's our next question? Alexis wants to know if you could write jokes with anyone, who would it be? Chelsea Pretty or Die? <laughs> well, Chelsea Pretty would be a great <laughs> answer. Yeah, Chelsea Pretty, um, you know, Pete Holmes would be great, a, uh, mm -hmm. the Nick Kroll almost, um, or even some of the greats, like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, I think it would be great yeah. to see, you know, how their process works. I think it's so interesting, especially comedians who kind of blend improv with their comedy, just how their uh, material comes out of it. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'm just I'm gonna say Chelsea Peretti, or else okay. Alexis there will <laughs> probably kill me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's about all the time we have for today. Thank you for um, to the viewers who were watching at home. If you loved Julian and his hilarious comedy routine, vote for him at tinyurl.com/votecreativeclass. He can't win without your vote. If you want to see more talent, tune in to next week's show on Wednesday at 11 a.m. I'm your host, Trinity Brown. Thank you for watching Creative Clash, and I'll see you next week.